All right, so as far as like 5.8, you know, probably most popular, most available, 5.8 gigahertz transmitters are all over the place, right? So here'd be one that I'd recommend. It actually does uh, over one watt race ranger here. So it's just a VTX, it's pretty good. This one does seven to 28 volts input, and it's also gonna give you a five volt output for your camera. This actually has a built-in microphone, but again, I don't really like that so much. You know, you might be able to make it work, maybe not. That's also got smart audio. So this will be an example of one of those deals that's got a built-in mic, but it's also got an audio channel. But this is not actually audio. It's supposed to be a control combined with audio, right? So I think you're supposed to be able to AC couple your audio in here so you can actually transmit audio, but at the same time, you know, this is using a protocol where you can actually control the VTX. Um, you know, if you don't really have a way of using that protocol, you know, it doesn't really matter. You might be able to get an external mic going, but again, you're dealing with the subcarriers here. So as far as I know, they all these VTXs run on six or six and a half megahertz. So I would imagine the microphone might be on one. Uh, you know, and this smart audio, if you were to use that, it might be on another, right? So it's like a toss up, but <laughs> for the most part, any receiver that I've ever got is going to pick up the audio coming from a VTX, whether I use the external or the internal mic. In this case, probably only going to be able to pick it up with the onboard mic. You know, again, I don't like that. It sucks. The audio is no good to me. It doesn't really work. Um, so that's why I go with a different one, unless I just didn't really care about it so much and just wanted a budget option that worked pretty good and, you know as far as the receiver you know something like this will work um you know you're gonna have to use your own screen you can use a television if you wanted this is just a single receiver it's not diversity and it's a high sensitivity there i would imagine is going to be something around maybe something like 85 dbm maybe i think you know the much better ones out there that you can find are going to be upwards of like 95 or maybe even higher which is pretty good you know, then you got your more intermediate stuff, still low level budget, you know, cheaper goggles. Some of them are diversity. Again, about the same sensitivity on these. You know, they're not going to be a whole lot better, but they're going to work more or less all the same type of deal. Some more expensive than others, you know, something like that. Yeah, that might work fine for you, but you really want the best signal, you know, penetration and all that. You're going to need something that will support a goggles module. And again, I'm not like recommending anything in particular, but this was just be an example, like a fed shark. You can see it's got a bay there. I would imagine for supporting modules, uh, you know, and one such example could be, you know, like this guy right here, not particularly recommending that, <laughs> you know, it's just an example. They're probably all about the same some are a little better better than others but the sensitivity on all these are going to be higher than the uh super budget cheapo ones so again the beauty with all this stuff you know the analog is you know so long as you set your transmitter to a certain channel when you set your receiver whatever it is you decide you want it to be to the same channel you're going to have video right that's all there is to it you know, no real compatibility issues to run into, you know, aside from the basic stuff like what kind of connectors you need for your antennas based on what's on the VTX, things like that. What kind of protocol you might be wanting to use, you know, if that is what you're trying to do, it's typically going to be smart audio or, or not. All right, so here's an example of a 1.2G transmitter. It claims 2 watts. You know, it's an interesting one. You've got your positive, negative, yellow video wire, but you've also got this white wire, you know, so this will be one that you might think would support audio, but I've already looked at this one. I guess it's, it doesn't say that in detail on here anywhere. Well, I guess it might. Uh, there you go. IRC tramp, right? So that's what that white wire is, right? So you got to really kind of pay attention to what, what the, what the VTX is doing in particular. You got to look it up. As far as I know, there's no obvious option that will give you audio, which will be the white wire. Um, aside from, you know, stuff like the part-time deals or the RMRC or, you know, there might be one or more out there that'll also do it. But as far as I know, all the other ones I've seen have the built-in mic. So that leaves really the only other thing, the other factor being, you know, the power output, right? So here's an example of a five watt transmitter that Foxier came out with, right? Apparently a lot of people are buying it. It's $135. For one, just outright, you have to imagine you could probably buy a cheapo 25 milliwatt deal for like, 
you know, 20 bucks or less, that's pretty high quality. And then buy like a, a low noise amplifier that will boost your 5.8 to about five watts for probably much cheaper than that, right? But let's just say you, you know, were buying a package deal like this and you wanted to run it. I don't really see a point in five whole watts because if you really pay attention to the physics you know you're going to get to a point where you have to factor in the power consumption the size of the battery that you've got on your rig how long you actually want it to run the heat dissipation that's going to be occurring on this deal uh where you know this built-in fan whatever built-in fan they got it's not going to cut it most likely uh so five watts you got to imagine there's going to be a certain point where you're pumping an extra amount of power that is only giving you so much extra signal gain, right? The amount of output you're getting in the equivalent penetration reach or whatever it might be, I would not say it's worth it. I think three watts is probably the max anyone should ever imagine pushing. And I, I typically don't run more than like two watts. And that's only if I'm trying to go around buildings and stuff, right? You know, if it's just sort of like a small area, I'm probably just going to do one watt. The name of the game is to get the best signal you can with the right antennas and not blasting as much power as possible. Because, you know, you could also run into issues where if you're pushing way too much power, you know, that actually could be, you know, it could have some adverse effects, right? So that's really where stuff like the antennas come in again. So this is 1.2. Again, I've got notch filters on all my stuff notch filters everywhere right you, know, you could try low pass filters like this you know i think these are actually for when you're running 1.3 and 2.4 control so this you know this will probably still work because it's got a cut off but you know you're probably going to have some losses there but anyway you know something like a notch filter is supposed to be less lossy than like a low pass right and I've seen some guys do some real funky stuff, you know, where they'll run splitters out, do all kinds of janky stuff with different antennas. You want to match your impedance on, you know, your transmitter and your receiver, but you don't want to be using all these different connectors and doing all this crazy stuff because you're going to lose signal there. You know, like likewise, if you really want to extend your antenna way up high, for example, well, you don't want to run a connector directly off your receiver that's sitting low with a long ass extension that's going way up to your antenna to extend it that way, right? You're going to, you want to want to extend the receiver itself as high as you can get it with the shortest possible extension on the antenna because you're looking for the least amount of loss, right? So you're going to have like insertion losses here. You know either way but if you can keep that down then you're going to take you know better advantage of all your stuff likewise there might be a particular channel that your stuff works on best right if you got a good antenna that won't detune easily then you might have a particular channel that it's tuned best on likewise you know that might be matched the best with your particular transmitter antenna you know all those little things matter uh, combined with the actual area that you're trying to drive in all right, so cameras, you know, whether 5.8, 1.2, 2.4 gigahertz, you know, whatever system you want to use, they're pretty much all going to be NTSC or PAL cameras. You're going to have different resolutions. Um, you're going to have different sensors, aspect ratios. Some of them, you know, they're pretty much all going to have a power wire, a ground, and a signal wire. And then they might also have a few extra for like control or something like that, right? So this is a good one. I use this ant camera a lot. It doesn't do too great in really bright lights. You know, you, <laughs> you have to set it, but the auto setting isn't too great, but it's got pretty good night nighttime uh, handling, right? Resolution's pretty good. So this is a good one. I like it. You know, this would be another one, probably a little better. Run Cam Phoenix 2 SE. So same deal. You know, this one's just going to have maybe a little different FLV, you know, resolution, all that. But I think this one probably handles... All types of lighting a, a little bit better but they're all typically you know they take between five and, and a certain amount of volts right so here's like a basic example of a uh, 5.8 gigahertz transmitter i've just thrown a big ass fan on it because this is actually a three watt advertised deal here's the kind of deal where you know i've just plugged the harness in came out with a connector for the battery and i've got a camera hooked up see that fan is pretty serious uh, because again this thing's gonna get crazy hot so that's the beauty of analog it's pretty simple 
you don't have all this crazy setting up you have to do, um, you know, unless maybe you've got like receiver module for goggles that needs like a firmware update or something, right? Like here's an example. This is a 1.3 receiver I've got set up over here. So it's a goggles module, but it's using a little bay, a little adapter bay where I can just plug it in and I don't need to put it in goggles. Because I've got goggles, but right now I've got 5.8 modules in them. And I don't want to keep, you know, swapping them in and out, right? So likewise, here's another one. These are 1.2, 1.3G receivers. They're basically the same, branded a little different. They might have, you know, slightly different variations between them. But they're pretty much the same, right? This is the RMRC receiver, more common receiver. Um, and that's what I started off using. AKK even advertises they've just come out with a transmitter that'll do up to three watts if you buy that version for 75 whole dollars right my experience with 1.2 1.3 has kind of led me to the decision where even though i'm real curious about it i'm not about to spend 75 dollars on a three watt just to see what the difference will be because i know that i'm still not going to be happy with it right with three watts, if it's a decent transmitter, then maybe I can go a little bit further, right? But I'm still not going to be able to go as far as I can with the DJI and have clear image the whole time, right? The only way I'm going to get clear image the whole time with 1.2 um, is if I either switch to a different control frequency and it just ends up being magic, or if I've got you know clear line of sight the whole time. Which again, uh, defeats the whole purpose for me. If I've got clear line of sight the whole time, then you know... I can just look at the freaking car and uh, drive it. All the little details are, for example, so this receiver right here, it's picking up the video just fine, but the audio is gonna have a particular subcarrier. So the transmitter that I'm using for all of my cars currently is a transmitter that uses an audio subcarrier that this receiver picks up just fine. These receivers, however, will not pick it up because they use a different audio subcarrier. It's either 6 megahertz or 6.5, whereas this one is probably going to be 5 or 5.5. It's one of the two, I'm not sure, right? So basically that means I can't just swap out receivers and still get audio. I'm only going to get audio with this one, uh, so long as I use the same VTX. And I'm only going to get audio with these, so long as I use a VTX that transmits audio on the same subcarrier that this is set up for. And I do have a transmitter on the car. I've got two of them on one car. I've got a test, test rig car, basically. Uh, so the main transmitter is the RMRC, and I also added another one that uses the same audio subcarrier as not only this receiver and the other one that I've got right. But then the problem with that is those transmitters have built-in microphones. And while they do work, you know, I've noticed that, say I try to pick up the audio using those microphones and the receivers, I have to cut the volume way up just to hear it. You know, and then the problem is any little bit of noise that you get sounds really loud. It's a, it's a loud crackle. Whereas with the RMRC setup, I can use my own external mic and then it comes through so freaking clearly that, you know, I turn the volume up here to like two or three. It's like super low. You know, I could hear ants farting. You know, it's, it's crazy. And likewise, when there's any kind of noise that comes through, it's not like super duper loud, right? So I prefer that. But at the same time, this particular receiver is not going to be as sensitive as something like this or the other one. So I've just got this set up to where if I want to pick up audio on any of my cars that have the RMRC transmitter for audio, um, you know, like I'm running a DJI rig, then I'll bring this with me. It'll just be this and it'll pick up the audio uh, from the VTX only. And, um, you know, I'm getting my video through DJI, obviously. And then if I want to, I can basically use this same rig here and just kind of do what I'm doing where I'll just come out with a plug to power this receiver, change over the inputs, and now I'm getting video into here through that guy, right? But likewise, uh, I'll have to use the onboard audio of the VTX that uses this same subcarrier, or I can still use the RMRC but what I'll have to do is I'll have to use this receiver and this receiver to where only the audio is coming through here, right? So the audio channel on this little screen here is going to come from here, and then the video is going to come from there, right? So that's how complicated it can get with all this different crap.
And so far, I haven't really noticed all that with the 5.8. Seems like you get a 5.8 transmitter that's got an audio channel. Pretty much all run on the same subcarrier. You know, like don't hold me to that, but that's typically how it's been. But this one again, which does have an onboard microphone, there it is right there. It's you can't hear it. Well, for one, I got the fan blowing right at it. But the volume on those are set to where the gain, it's, you know, they're automatic gain typically, but they're made for drones, right? So you're not going to hear anything. Like you're going to have to turn the volume way up just to hear anything. To me, it's not worth it. So then it's like, well, what's the point of all this different crap, right? I got this one. I got 1.3. Like, why don't I just stick with one? So really, the only reason I still use this mainly is because this just happens to be a car that's real quiet, right? It works good at night. I can see real good with the 1.3 and the analog cams, and I can creep around with it real slow at night, right? It's the only reason, but that's basically how it's set up. So you can see I've actually got two 1.3s on there, well, three. I got a Partom, behind that I got the RMRC, and I've got this other one, which I don't even know what that is. It's like a Flywoo or something, and that's got the onboard mic. So again, I can just sort of switch these around, you know, for testing. And I've put the 5.8s on here also for testing. So again, this is just sort of like a, a test rig. And then really in the end, it's like, okay, well, what is the actual point of all this crap? If uh, I've got DJI, I'm using DJI, right? Well, DJI is great. I feel like something like this could also be great if you can get it working good. But the DJI cannot be beat. The digital cannot be beat. And then the O3, when you actually get it set up good, you can go so far, it's crazy. But the thing is, it doesn't have audio, right? And when you're driving around a car, like, you really want to have audio. Like, it just doesn't feel right otherwise, in my opinion. You know, it's not so much about when you render a video, it's good to have the accompanying audio. It's just when you're driving around, it's, it's good to be able to hear the real-time feedback of what's going on. Since I don't have audio and I need this anyway because this is what's giving me live audio when I run the DJI stuff, you know, it's like, well, damn, you know, I might as well adopt the 1.3 stuff in other ways if I can. So I've got it on a car. So basically, when I want to run 1.3 by itself, I got this guy. I'll turn it on, turn on the car, control it with the controller. When I want to run any kind of DJI, I bring this guy with me. I turn it on and I turn the VTX on on the car along with the O3. And I get the O3 video and I get this audio. If I wanted to Frankenstein some weird setup to where I found a 5.8 analog transmitter that I just really, really loved, but it didn't have audio, which can happen, then again, I could just still use 1.3 alongside with it and have audio just coming from the 1.3. And so while that seems weird, it's like, well, why wouldn't you just use 1.3, period? And again, that's because I have a lot of problems with 1.3, right? So we're talking like, you know, long before sticking to this particular receiver just for ease, you know, I've tried many of them, right? So I've tried several different types of uh, transmitters now tried several different types of receivers i've tried goggles modules now i've tried higher sensitivity ones i've tried all kinds of different stuff i've tried different channels different antennas different kind of control frequencies along with it nothing really seems to make enough of a difference to where i'm like all right yeah cool cool 1.3 is awesome i can go around the neighborhood because no i can't go around the neighborhood with 1.3 because no matter what so long as i put a moderate amount of obstruction in there the video gets so bad and distorted it's just not, not fun anymore you know, it's like i'm struggling to see so much you know it like takes away the whole fun of it right so when it comes to analog it's like super easy right you already got a car you got a controller you're able to drive the car around all right well you take your video transmitter that's got an atten antenna on it and you attach it to the car some kind of way you put a camera on it you know however you want i would recommend using a separate battery you know to power the vtx it could just be one sort of all enclosed module that you can add on different cars if you wanted and then boom it's just that simple right you, you power it up and you drive your car around as per normal when you start to get the kind of range out of your video system where your control system can no longer keep up you know that's when you need to start investing in better controls right in this case you know this radio link this controller has really impressive range i think i only saw problems with it stock when I would put just the right obstruction in the way. Every now and then, I'm, I'm not sure what it was, but every now and then, this guy would give out and I'd be driving and I'd reach a point where all of a sudden, you know, my, my camera server will just droop down and stop, right? 
or I just, I'll just lose my control. And in that situation, I was like, oh crap, you know, what do I do? So what I ended up doing was using a 2.4 control booster to solve that problem. So the control booster solved all my problems where I could probably, you know, I had crazy range at that point, but I was putting out ridiculous amounts of power to do that. Right. It just didn't make any sense. Um, so that's why I figured, all right, well, let me go with Crossfire instead. So everybody's using uh, ELRS nowadays, but Crossfire, in my opinion, is pretty damn good. I mean, this thing right here can do two watts. So 915 megahertz, two watts. I mean, that's ridiculous. Like, I'm never going to need that much. It'll dynamically reach up to that point when it has a hard time. Uh, I guess when it sees that signal drop to a certain point, it'll push that power out real high you know just to try to make sure that you never lose control but you don't probably actually need it to be that high ever so i typically run it about 500 milliwatts max but you could probably get by just fine at like 100 or 250 right no matter how far you go i never really needed these new crazy uh surface controllers like the mt12 as awesome as that is all that would really do extra for me personally is give me more switches right but the thing is, the way these switches are laid out are actually perfect for me. I just don't have any more of them to do more stuff if I wanted to, right? So if, if you know, if it was up to me, I'd have like a row of switches up here or something. Like I'd have a couple extra pots. I'd have some three position switches, like just a bunch of different switches where they don't all have to be sort of arranged like these are. Like these are good ergonomic locations it lets me control the car where i can look left or right and do all kinds of stuff without actually taking my hands off the sticks so i can do them all simultaneously but let's just say i wanted extra features like just extra little cool stuff right it'd be nice to just have little toggles elsewhere to do that right like this is going to be my camera so it's a three position so so long as it's in the center i'm looking straight or i could look right or i could look left right i decided that's better than some type of hot because i want it to just easily be centered every time right as far as my looking up and down i don't care so much about an easy auto center you know it's just i can just adjust that however i want on the fly and probably don't need to change it so much and likewise i got like a horn flashlight boom but again if you want more than that I don't really know how you're going to do it on a controller like this. And uh, likewise, the receivers I've got only go up to eight channels total. All right, so when it comes to getting your controller to tell the, you know, your receiver in your car to do whatever, it's basically all the same, you know, but this is how it's done in this radio link controller, right? So you go in your settings and you got all this different stuff you can do, right? But basically, if you want to set... Uh, what controls particular channels you, know, you can see right here I've got an aux channel setting so it's basically showing you you got all these channels where you know first of all channels one and two are your steering and throttle so you can't really change that right but then as far as the knobs the switches all that stuff it's like okay well channel three what do I want channel three to be activated by right on one of them I've got it so when I press the button the flashlight comes on and it stays on and I press it again, the flashlight comes off, right? On another one, I've got it so when I hold the button down, the horn comes on, and when I let go of the button, the horn goes off. Right? Most people are probably familiar, you know, with how all the RC stuff works, basically. And the main question is, like, how are you getting the full power on the O3? So I'm pretty sure I've been over this before, but I don't really think I showed it in a lot of detail. So basically, there was a guy named Richard Amis, or Amis, or however you pronounce that, a guy that wrote some code for Arduino, and he posted it on GitHub, right? I think... Right now, he's modified the code, so he's not using this anymore. He's changed it. So he's using a C Duino now instead of an Arduino. And I think his newest version is making it so you just upload the code, wire it up, and every time you power it on, it's going to automatically arm and go to full power, right? This one is still set up where you assign the receiver a channel to activate and bring it into full power. And I actually prefer that uh, just because, again, I like being able to run it around in low power for long periods, like just testing out stuff, right? He provides an image, actually, which is right here. So this is how it's wired up, right? It's got a, you know, connector coming out, going to your receiver. Down here is where your receiver would be, obviously, to receiver. Um, and that's coming in. 
and it's powering the receiver and then you're pulling the power off that receiver which is coming from the main battery through the ESC and you're coming out to power the Arduino so in my case I think because I wanted to make sure it was 5 volts I've just used a 5 volt regulator Right, coming off what I think is over six volts BEC. Um, if that means it might end up being slightly less than five volts because of some drops, you know, I'm cool with that. I just don't really want it to be over that just in case. Um, so that's basically what I'm doing. Five volt regulator, boom, power this five volts. Then you've just got these digital inputs or outputs, right? So when you set this particular, say this is, you know, channel five that you plug this into on your receiver and on your controller, you say, okay, I'm going to set this button to turn on channel five. Then this digital input is going to say, oh, the input's high. And then it's going to start outputting whatever signal it's supposed to output over here to get the DJI to go into ARM full power mode. All right. And again, this, you know, this is just Arduino code. You just upload it to the Nano. This is not my code, but I still have it. And, you know, again, you can find the newer version on GitHub, uh, Richard Miss. And also, as far as I know, Chad Rains is coming out with a little board that will do the same thing where it'll auto arm the O3 for you. And it should be like easy peasy, right? So if I just use this big rock as an example, see, I've got this uh, main DJI switch and then I've got the, uh, the 1.3 switch over here. So this is my 1.3 antenna. It's a fan blowing on the VTX. When I cut that on, it's just cutting on the 1.3, and that's what's giving me audio. So this is what I bring with me, obviously. It's got the 1.3 receiver, and you know, there's no video feed because I haven't hooked up the camera. I can if I want to, but I found I get better audio not hooking up the camera. So now I've got the audio there, all right? So with that little antenna poked out, I'll get about clear audio. I would say up until the point where maybe I have to pay attention to the DJI signal. You know, this will get scratchy and it'll go out before I lose video, but I have audio pretty much most of the time I'm driving, you know, pretty much anywhere I go, right? All right, so I've cut the switch on, and you can see basically how I've got this worked out is when I cut the switch on, it uh, cuts BEC output power to the little fan in there, and I've just spliced off that to uh, add another connector, which powers the uh, voltmeter right here which then is obviously sensing the main battery on the battery that's running the uh, motor, you know, and the ESC and all that, right? So then I'm gonna cut the controller on over here. It's set to Big Rock, and I'll cut that guy on, and that's gonna link up. And I've also made sure that I've got my arm switch off. So then with the car on the ground, I'm gonna cut that switch on. Then I'm gonna cut the 1.3 VTX on, which I could have had them on already, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and Get those going. So now I've got both switches on, both VTX is going, everything is on on the car. So now the O3 is booting up in there. So now it's linked up. You can sort of see air unit in low power mode, all right? And I've got six megabits. Flip my arm switch on now. That's what it does to where it just switches over, right? It doesn't really give me any messages. It just takes the low power warning off. When I cut the switch back off, that's what it does. It says motor stopped, air unit in low power mode, right? All right, so then I've cut all my switches off and I've made sure to cut the car off first before I cut the control off. And you wanna make sure to do that just in case something funky happens where if you <laughs> cut your control off first the car doesn't go shooting off and flying that shouldn't really happen but it's happened to me before so then we got the inside of the car here right where it's just how i've got this set up i've got everything on the top but i've run connectors down so i've got all these different connectors that i'll have to disconnect if i want to remove the body it's really not all that bad and so i've got one here for the dji arm signal and i've got my servos got my voltmeters uh, flashlight you know all that different stuff and then up in here is where I've got a little run cam so while I've got the live audio I don't have an easy way to record it and I don't want to use a DVR so that's why I've got this so basically the way this is set up is as soon as I cut my DJI switch on and that gets power this also gets power which is a 5 volt regulator to power this guy and as soon as this powers on it starts recording as soon as it turns off 
it saves the file. I just pull the file off this, line it up with the video, and that's how I have audio in the videos. Only real things with these builds, I'm add my own little capacitor feed throughs. Got little aux channel switches, like those little circuits for things like the flashlights and whatnot. There goes the Arduino Nano, basically sealed up in a plastic bag and all sealed up with <laughs> like tape and glue and stuff. Got the two batteries, so two stacked 3S batteries, one for all the video stuff, one for the car. So while I like this kind of setup where, you know, really once I unplug everything, I can move all these wires aside. I can still easily remove the batteries. I can still modify and upgrade this whole thing, uh, you know, without much trouble, right? But the downside is, you know, I'm attaching the camera to the body. Now, the benefit of this particular truck is it's got a real thick body compared to other ones. Um, especially this top part here so it's real sturdy and then um, you know once I clip it down I like to add you know little zip ties on there so when I force those clips down it adds a little bit of extra tension on it so the body's pretty sturdy when it's on there but that's still gonna provide a little bit of jiggly wigglies when you're driving right no matter what you're still slightly slightly gonna see it which is why part of why the Typhon looks so much better to me when I'm driving it because I basically mounted the Typhon camera rig real solid to this portion here on its chassis um, so while that's gonna make it a little harder for me to upgrade stuff you know, I could still do it you know, it's just a different approach there all right all right now let's look at like the analog setup this is 5.8 you know I'd say this is pretty good these are pr two pretty good antennas decent little patches so this is two diversity receivers that work together on these goggles I personally don't like these goggles for what they cost their sky zones but whatever they work right so you got this one module that gives me audio and another one that doesn't but this one has more of a narrow band where you know it's supposed to pick up video a little bit better but with the combination of the two I get audio and video with four different antennas so that's you know what some people call quadversity or whatever so while that works and it works all right you know where i can just put these on cut it on boom i get video i can hit record record it if i want to I can turn up the volume i can hear volume you know just through a pair of headphones bing bang boom it's real easy um you know if i wanted to i could sit these somewhere come out of them go into this screen you know all that stuff i could do major upside you have a lot of great visibility in low lighting. Downside, obviously, I'm not going to be able to see expressions on people's faces from far away like I can with the DJI. You know, those fine details I'm not going to see with the analog, but I could see pretty damn good with a good camera. But mind you, the screen also has to be good if you're going to use one of these screens because I've had a couple that were just absolute garbage, mainly the TFTs. Right. I feel like if you're going to get a screen, you got to get a little IPS screen. You know, something like 10 inches works out pretty good. All right, and antennas. These are the goggles antennas I use for the DJI. These are goggles V2s. I like them. So I really haven't felt the need to upgrade because personally, you know, I'm looking at tiny screens in front of my eyeballs. So you know, if, if I had, if I was looking at like a much larger screen, then okay, maybe like a higher resolution will make. You know that much of a deal to me but really in this case looks good enough to me right so i got true rc stubby i think that's just a random whatchamacallit stubby in these patches right here for the analog stuff same thing basically you know it's a true rc but my other 5.8 that's a true rc just in a different shape for the 1.3 it's all these true rc singularities these guys they're all on the cars you can see i got the diamond deal for the crossfire because the immortal tier whatever I mean that worked fine but this is supposedly supposed to basically be just as good but you get more directional range all right so while there's probably a, you know a whole lot of other little details and topics to cover with this stuff you know, lastly I'm just gonna go into general layout range you know the type what you should basically expect right and this is gonna go for you know analog and digital but as far as digital goes I've only got the experience with the uh, DJI 03 which works out pretty good I'm gonna say worst case example right real populated city so this is Central Park right so this is gonna be an example of let's just say you live by Central Park 
this is probably going to be a great spot. So let's just take this big circle right here. So for one, it's good to uh, gauge where you're trying to go beforehand, measure the distance from basically uh, one stretch to the other. So that's 304 meters, right? So we already know that's pretty much nothing for the DJI. But then you want to check out the actual layout, what's going on here. So you get a street view. So you can see it's a pretty flat area. You know, so that big oval is going to go all the way around. And even though you've got trees here, that's probably going to be like the end of it down there. You should be able to go all the way around. Like if you were standing right here, you should be able to drive that thing all the way around. No problem. Um, you know, again, look at it from this way. So yeah, you should be able to drive around that with the trees basically being the, the only issue. As far as analog, I don't know. With a high power VTX, you might also be able to do it. Um, you know, but with the DJI, you're going to have pretty awesome uh, video the whole time you do it. All right, so now let's slide over. Let's say you wanted to try to go around this little lake right here, right? Now you can see the layout is such that you really don't have a clear view from one end to the other, no matter where you are, right? So it's kind of hard to say, like, your best bet might be right here, right? So let's kind of look what's going on there. So if you're right here, you probably have the best view of the whole lake without obstruction, right? But then you see, once you start going down this way, you're gonna stack up a lot of trees, right? So you can start to get an idea of where you're gonna struggle with. Now you can just kind of look. So if I'm standing right here, judging by the lack of obstruction here, now let's go over here actually. Yeah, so it's relatively flat again, you know, you've got a building here. It's mainly all trees though, right? So if I'm standing right here, where I think I've got the best view, basically of all the way down this way, and I, that's about, you know, not quite 300 meters, I think, right? So I'm gonna have no problem, and then once I start to get around here, I'm gonna start to see that signal drop probably, right? And it's gonna be sort of like a gamble of whether I'm gonna be able to make it all the way to this point without losing signal, right? If I can manage to make it around here, well, then once I get to around this point, I'm going to see that signal come back. And then once I get basically on this outer area here where I've got the most view, I'll probably have fairly strong signal. So then I'll just be cruising, 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 cruising. And again, I should be fine over here. But this is where the land and the trees are also going to give me problems, right? So I'm going to be all the way over here looking this way. And I, you know, I could probably make it over here, but this is going to be real iffy, right? So if I can manage to make it over here, these little bit of trees might be kind of iffy. But again, once I get to about this point, I'll probably see a pickup in the signal. Then once again, over here is going to be the struggle point because I'm sort of stacking up a good amount of stuff here, building trees all the way out this way. So if I can manage to get to this clearing, it'll be a little better. And once again, right here, I'm going to struggle real hard. But if I can manage to make it down through this way, once I get maybe, you know, back around this point, I'm going to see that signal kind of do a little better and better and better until I get all the way, you know, back over here, right? So it's kind of like you really got to know the layout. You know, if I happen to, like, say I wanted to be hanging out right here on this basketball court, I'm going to stand right here. Well, how far can I go in this kind of area? Well, it you know, it's really all going to depend, right? I would say from my experience, I shouldn't have much problem kind of coasting around this building here. But once I get around this building, you know, at that point, it's a toss-up. Like, how you know, where else can I go aside from that? You know, if I keep going this way, you know, eventually I'm adding more building. You know, go this way, it's the same thing. Like, no matter where I go, I'm adding more obstruction, so... I might be able to maybe go like around this area right here, right? Kind of do this little circle around these two buildings. It all depends. You know, actually I should, if I'm sitting right here, I should be able to cover this block radius, right? And that's probably about it. 
you know, all depending, really does all depend, you know, so then you start to get into specifics, see how this is laid out, um, you know, let's say I wanted to be able to creep around through here, and then hit this little track right here, well, this building is mainly in the way, over here I've got trees in the way, but I've got sort of like an opening over here, so I could either kind of park right here, just go through this building where I'm taking this short path and I should be fine. Or from all the way over here, well, I'm going to want to try to be like maybe closer to this way where I've only got the trees. You know, if I'm parked like right here and I'm stacking that building up along with the trees and then what would ultimately be this piece of building, well, you know, it might not work out, right? So you really kind of got to pay attention to the layout to understand how, um, you know, your signal is going to work out, you know, depending on where you're going. 